Hey guys, Paul with Meldrum Performance Coaching and Complete Personal Training Podcast. So this is a new series that we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about some topics that are really pertinent to the fitness industry at the moment. Uh, they've received a ton of publicity and attention, rightfully so, and a lot of coaches are talking about them for a number of different reasons with a number of different viewpoints. So I thought I had to put my own in there and some questions that we could possibly ask. So uh, I'm going to be talking about things like weight bias, fat shaming, health at every size, and having aesthetic goals. So this series is going to go on for an indeterminate amount of time, uh, just because this is stuff that's super, super important. And I had the series lined up for a while, but I pushed it forward in the list after a, well, I responded to a story from James Walsh and from Hypertrophy Hub. I highly recommend that you check him out on Instagram. I will tag it. I don't know if he has a YouTube channel. So on YouTube, I won't be able to do that, but nevertheless, and he asked the question, and this is a really good point to start the whole discussion at, um, who's at fault for obesity? And in talking from a more personal level, so like if one person is overweight, whose fault is it that they're actually overweight? And it's a really good question um, to look at because it's something that a lot of people have an immediate knee-jerk reaction to, particularly personal trainers. We generally tend to be fat shamers, uh, more so than we'd like to admit. So normally when you hear, well, whose fault is it that someone's overweight? The immediate answer is that pops into most people's head, and then I hear a lot of the time, is, well, it's their fault. They're the ones who ate the food. They're the ones who don't do the exercise. Uh, no one held a gun to their head and made them eat the cookie. Uh, this is a very popular... Um, axiom that was popularized by Charles Poliquin a long, long time ago, um, who got in a lot of trouble for fat shaming himself. Uh, and although there are some extents of it and some circumstances and some situations that it is true for some people, in a lot of situations and circumstances, it absolutely isn't true. So we really need to take context in the situation here, apply a nuance and thoughtful and considerate point of view to this particular topic and then start to understand health more from a multi-dimensional aspect. So in terms of obesity being the person's fault itself, um, we could see this in say powerlifting, okay? Uh, just to use a very simple example, Dave Tate, a great powerlifter, good coach, etc., great coach, uh, he was obese and it was his decision. He chose to eat he had a bachelor's degree in nutrition, I think, and he chose to eat tons of Maccas, Wendy's, and all kinds of junk food every single day because he wanted to push his weight higher and higher. He knew about the health risk. He knew everything about that was going on. Uh, that was his decision. So in those types of context, you can say that, yes, that is that person's fault. They were educated. They knew what they're doing. They were taking the risk. That's okay. That's a decision that they make, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. This is similar to people who take... Um, anabolic steroids, for example, uh, whose fault is that they take anabolics? Well, it's theirs in a lot of situations. If they understand it, they understand how to do it, they understand the context behind it, they understand the consequences they have to deal with versus an athlete who has no idea, who's just like, yes, coach, I'll give, I'll take whatever you give me. There's an element of responsibility on the coach's uh, side there. So what James brought up in his uh, Instagram story series was stuff like, we live in a basogenic environment. And we do live in a highly obesogenic environment. We can simply hop on our phones, we have a pizza delivered to our house within 30 minutes, we have a soft drink, high sugar, high fat food, high sodium foods, all a recipe for weight gain without having to lift a finger, move a muscle besides using our phone. Although I'm sure we could use Siri to do it and just have to work our mouth besides eating it. Uh, we have cultural and societal influences as well. So cultural influences, we have food, we have, you know, parents who may want to fatten us up, for example. That's one thing we get told that we need to finish off all our plates because they're starving children in Africa. Uh, there's a number of different factors there. Uh, economics plays into obesity as well. Uh, healthy food is and can be more expensive. Um, you know, getting McDonald's can feed the whole family quite cheaply uh, and very quickly for very little effort versus actually cooking the food and going through that whole process and understanding about nutrition, plus getting kids to eat it is a whole nother thing as well. Um, you know, so availability of food is one, cooking skills. Um, there's so many factors that we need to consider with health. And this is something that a lot of personal trainers don't really do. And this is what I wanted to bring to light today was that we need to do a better job being aware of the societal, the cultural, 
the socio-political and the other aspects of health that will play into our weight, into our movement throughout the day. Easy, easy one to look at is the pandemic. A lot of people uh, were made incredibly sedentary by the pandemic. And you know, you could easily say, well, you could go for an hour walk each day. Well, for a lot of people that could have caused more stress because you know they're worried about getting sick. Uh, they could have been so uh, mentally unwell from staying at home all day and not having social interaction that was causing problems. They needed to comfort themselves with something else, uh, which is food in a lot of cases. So what we need to consider as personal trainers in our first step at working with clients who you know, need to lose weight and want to lose weight, uh, need to lose weight would be in the case of morbid obesity. I think the I think you can have health at every size to an extent, but the title of morbid obesity kind of indicates that there is going to be a health risk there. So that's something we'll address at the Health at Every Size uh, podcast. But we need to be aware that blaming people and making them feel worse for something isn't necessarily the most intelligent way to facilitate a change in that person. Yes, there needs to be an element of personal responsibility, particularly in changing those habits and behaviors and patterns that that person has developed. So we need to teach our clients how to have personal accountability, but we need to be aware of everything around them that is pushing them in the opposite direction to what we're doing. This is why personal training as a overall industry has a very low impact on weight loss and the obesity uh, epidemic. We don't consider this from a multifaceted point of view. So over this next series of podcasts, we're going to go into health at every size. We're going to go into fat shaming. We're going to go into all the socio-political stuff. We're going to look at the primary, secondary, and tertiary tiers of health change and how we can make a difference to that. And then also understand that a little bit more so then we can actually make better decisions for coaching our clients, develop a higher degree of empathy, and be able to treat people like humans rather than just people who are calories in versus calories out, which is fundamentally true but getting there is a very different different story. So guys, really looking forward to doing this series because I've heard a lot of stuff recently like if people just grew vegetables in their house that they wouldn't be overweight. Well, that, it's a very uh, naive and unnuanced way of looking at things. So I really appreciate James uh, opening up the conversation again uh, in a balanced and you know, intelligent way. So guys, looking forward to talking more about this. Speak soon.